Join our knowledgeable hosts as they dive into the captivating universe of comic books, movies, TV shows, and pop culture. Get ready for vibrant discussions and a shared enthusiasm for all things superhero and beyond. A comic podcast straight from the panels. This is Beyond the Capes. All right, everyone, welcome back to another episode of Beyond the Cape podcast. With us today is we have Clay McCormick and Ricardo Lopez Ortiz, and we are here to talk about their new upcoming comic coming out soon, Hardstyle Juice. Welcome to the show. Thanks. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you for having us, man. Appreciate it. All right. So I, I luckily got to read the first issue of this, um, and I can't wait to talk about it in the later half of the show. Where do you guys both come from in your career spectrum? Um, in the comic industry. Uh, you you want to go first, Rick? No, you can go first. <laughs> uh, I've I've been working comics for. It's funny every time I say this, I keep going like, "Oh, it's been like ten years," but it's really been like closer to twenty at this point because you know, <laughs> time keeps moving on. Um, but yeah, I, I I had done a lot of indie stuff, and um, the last handful of years, I've been I've been doing stuff for uh, uh, IDW and and Boom and Oni and some other companies, and I most recently was the uh, co-writer on uh, Batman White Knight Presents Generation Joker and Red Hood, respectively. And uh, yeah, so I've been kind of plugging along, and Ricardo and I have been friends for a long time, and uh, our paths finally hooked up for this book that we wanted to do together. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've been kind of on the kind of on the same boat. Been doing this professionally now for ten years, exactly. I think this year, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, just trying to get into the business and all that stuff. I went to school in New York, School of Visual Arts. After that, I did a lot of freelance illustration, editorial stuff, and like a lot of magazine work. And uh, then I spent some years. Uh, didn't kind of vibe with me for a bit, so I decided to like kind of shift towards comics. But before I could get into that, I did some work as a, a graphic artist for a t-shirt brand while I kind of like built my comics portfolio and stuff and understood the the medium better because it's a pretty big shift from just illustration to comics, even though it doesn't feel like it would be, but it is. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, like uh, I my first like. A uh, big break was with uh, with uh, Marvel doing a uh, uh, Kingpin Civil War with written by Matt Rosenberg, and that was a lot of fun to do. And that led to doing Hit Girl in Columbia and Black Panther vs Deadpool, uh, the pull, and most recently I did uh, had a Batman Black and White uh, story, which for me was like a big achievement. Always wanted to do one of those, so Hell yeah. that felt really freaking cool. <laughs> Definitely, uh, Batman's always cool, no matter, and no matter what context you put it in. Yeah, uh, always. Now, is this the first time you guys have actually collaborated on a story together, or is this kind of something, maybe like through the years, you guys have just kind of kicked around different stories off of each other? Well, this story in particular, it is the first time we've collaborated, but we've had this in the hopper for, geez, it's been a while now, six years at least. No, um, I think it's more like three, I think. It was definitely before the pandemic. Was it I know the, the, the pandemic yeah. really flattens out time, but uh, yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. So it's it probably five ish years then. Let's split the difference. Um, true, yeah, yeah, because it was like for the, the first uh sketchbook that I did, it was like she was on the cover for it. Yeah, yeah. The and, the uh, project was the genesis of it was Ricardo had done this sketch uh of a deathmatch wrestler on the cover of the sketchbook. And um, I had always kind of wanted to do a wrestling comic, but hadn't quite figured out what the story was. And then I saw this cover and like the whole story just jumped into my head. And so, you know, I texted him. I was like, what, what, are, what are you doing? Can we work on this? Is this something you want to do? So, um, yeah, we were both into it. And it just was a matter of finding the right time. And, and it finally uh, it finally lined up for us. Awesome. Now, obviously, you guys are familiar with each other's work. Obviously, you're friends. This is how we got the story. Um, was it easier then to work on this project together just kind of knowing the strengths and weaknesses of both people uh in collaborating uh yeah i think so like for the most part it's been like matt chill you know like uh yeah. cause clay is also an artist so like it's pretty cool to like have somebody that like draws really well to also like 
give you like pointers and stuff like when discussing like layouts and stuff like that um oh good i'm glad yeah. you i'm glad you find it helpful and it's not just me overstepping all the time <laughs> <laughs> no not at all not at all man yeah so it's like so it's fun to like uh deal with that and like having like you know kind of different uh point of views because he's got like a more like uh you know american comics background and i got more like a manga background with I, the stuff that i grew up with so it's like it's been pretty fun like merging all that stuff together yeah awesome. it's it's been cool because uh you know as rick said i i'm i'm actually newer to writing than i am to drawing i've i've been writing the last few years but i primarily have been an artist most of my career and um so when i'm writing the book i'm kind of seeing it in my head as I'm writing it and I try not to be too forceful visually because I obviously want him to do whatever he's going to do with it. I don't want to you know, put any constraints on him. And uh, it's always fun when I get a page back after he's done his layouts or whatever. And I go, Oh, Oh, I didn't even think about that. Like it's a, it's a different, completely different way. That's, that's just as good, if not better than what I had in my head. Definitely. Um, now you guys are, I believe unveiling this on comiXology. Um, are you guys also doing a, a printed version as well? As far as we know, it will be collect a, a collected edition will come out through Dark Horse in I don't know if it's six months or a year or something yeah, like, that. like that. Yeah, as long it's, as it's, plans it's, don't change, that should be the plan. Yeah, it's digital first through Comicsology Originals right now, so you know that's where you can get it. Awesome. Uh, well, and I think it's it's nice. I just talked to someone yesterday about digital. Um, it's crazy to think that. I mean, here in America, we all know Tuesdays and Wednesdays, finally, going back to all Wednesday, new releases. Um, yeah. Thank God. Uh, but you guys, uh, as soon as you put your comic out, Amazon approves it and whatnot. And you, uh, I don't know how if it feels any different knowing that your comic is now all over the world, kind of thanks to the digital platform. Um, if that changes any kind of the process of how you go about writing your stories or making it kind of for a digital background versus kind of a physical print. Yeah, changed a couple of things when it came to like uh, like uh, double page spreads and stuff mm, like that. Yeah. Like, can't really do them because you know just how the readers work and stuff. Um, so that yeah, that I think that was kind of like the big difference. Everything else is seems for me from my from the artist's point of view seems kind of similar. The big difference is in the the marketing aspect. Yeah, of it. you know you don't have the uh, the four month like uh foc stuff yep. and like uh no pre-orders and stuff it's like oh it's out okay <laughs> yeah that was that was the strangest thing is because you know we're, we're both used to okay so now start talking about the book now because you got to get people to say like like you said like four two or three four months out or whatever and this one was okay it's announcing on the fourth and it's coming out on the 16th and we were like oh oh yeah, uh, yeah. sure yeah <laughs> So that was awesome. a bit of a surprise. <laughs> yeah, that will <laughs> that will definitely um, kind of take you over. Now, this was obviously all done art artistically. I'm assuming kind of on graphic graphic design or computer. Do you still do you find most of your artwork going to a digital medium first, or do you still do pen and pencil and then import it for kind of digital? Uh, I do like kind of like half and half. I do all the prelim like layouts and pencil work. I do that digitally because it just saves time and editing because that's mostly where the editing happens. So it like makes all that stuff easier. Um, but then I do still finish everything on paper. So all the inks and final like work is all on paper. So there'll be physical, there are physical pages for, for everything of our style juice. Awesome. Um, and I, so, I hand write all my scripts in, in long form hand in, in notebooks <laughs> on the wall, you know, just dry erase, beautiful mind. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah, what, that's really, why it's really difficult really to lucky. get them to my collaborators. <laughs> just, uh, you know, it's a Snapchat. Just take them. Yeah. Perfect. I love it. Yeah. I just do a, a, a panogram there you go. photo of my yeah. entire <laughs> window. All right. This is the story. Um, Pan panogram. That's not a word. Oh, panoramic, 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 panoramic could catch on though. Um, Anagram for devils. <laughs> <laughs> Brand new app. Um, so with this story, I mean, obviously, again, this is the first time you guys are officially like working on a story together. What was the funnest part about doing the story, and what was one of the hardest parts about doing the story? 
Well, the funnest part for me was because as, as Rick said, his art is a skews a little bit more, um, Japanese manga influence than mine does seeing those two things come together and seeing how, uh, awesome and, uh, energetic everything he was doing was, was coming through. Um, it was cause, uh, like I said, it, 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 as I was writing it, it was looking different in my head. And then when he would get his pages back, I'd be like, oh yeah, okay. That's a, that's great. That energy is there is fantastic. So it was, it was really fun to see, um, my stuff going through a different filter than I'm used to. Yeah. I think, yeah. Like the, the, for me, the funnest part is just like getting to like draw like all the characters. Cause I think like all the characters are like pretty damn cool. So it's like really fun to like get in there and draw them and uh, see how like they kind of change throughout the story and uh, get to seeing them all like in, in action and doing different things. So like, you know, and just getting to draw pro wrestling because I love pro wrestling. So like, <laughs> that's probably the most fun part and like putting little like Easter eggs and stuff. So see who notices and who doesn't like, there's a bunch of little things written all over the, like the backgrounds and stuff. Um, so that's probably like the, the funnest part um, or the hardest. I don't know if there's like anything been hard um, other than like, the the actual labor of it that's always hard mm -hmm. when it comes to drawing comics. Um, yeah. But yeah. Uh, yeah, it's been fun. <laughs> yeah, it, it's um, I I I I I don't think we can when stress that enough how Rick and I are both wrestling fans and we would you know we text all the time about different wrestling stuff and so to to finally be able to do this and basically take all that stuff in our heads and put it down on on, on paper has been has been a lot of fun and you know it's it's fun because we we are kind of on the same page that way that i can write in a reference to something that yeah. he gets immediately you know i can say you know just like rick flair in 1984 and he's like no i got it no problem <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah that yeah, definitely has to help him yeah we're just uh, fantasy booking a comic right here oh yeah absolutely <laughs> that's basically what it is. Yeah. um now obviously you guys said you started this idea kind of a while back obviously you had done a sketch for your sketchbook um did you kind of immediately know how you wanted these characters to look at least for like the initial like kicking the idea of the story or is that something that kind of got fleshed out a lot later the characters were most were almost entirely uh ricardo where i i had kind of really quickly sketched up the story and which has remained largely unchanged since like the yeah. first poorly spelt text message i fired off to him like five <laughs> years ago um but yeah R R rick took those the ideas and just really kind of built a lot of great characters out of them um and gave them a lot of attributes that i i probably wasn't even thinking about and he really fleshed them out in a in a, in a great way yeah i think like yeah it just kind of like went like oh what how, how can i make these characters look cool and just kind of like make them fit like as a family and as like wrestlers and all that stuff and i think only like one character we changed and uh yeah I'm not gonna spoil it but uh, <laughs> yeah uh won't say the name put it put aside we'll say we'll put it yeah put, put it aside back. yeah yeah so a character shifted yeah. yeah it's been put aside that it's gonna have a bigger role here but it got shifted for the better i think yeah yeah, I think right. so. yeah. awesome now I was really happy to see that this was a wrestling comic because there's very few in between that I can really name um, that go on down this genre. Do you think there's a reason behind it, or is people just kind of overlook it as something that just, I guess, natural? I guess because I I grew up with the WWF and everything, but me wrestling's just that's an everyday American thing. You know, it's it's strange because when I when we first kind of we're kicking this around i had the same thought where i was like man there's really nobody working in this genre and since then um there's been a few great ones that have popped up like uh do a power bomb and um the crimson cage was pretty cool it was like a, a 80s wrestling version of Macbeth. um but i it, yeah it's it's it seems like they're 
hasn't been a lot of comics, wrestling comics that aren't directly based on real wrestlers. Yeah. Which is something I haven't really kind of gotten my mind around why. Um, I'm, maybe it's just easier to sell. You've got your characters built in or something yeah. like that. I'm not sure. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm not sure why. I, I feel like that means that the door is wide open. Um, you know, hopefully. I, I don't know how you feel about it, Rick. Yeah, no, 100%. I think, like, the the thing that, like, I think maybe, like, scares people. Or, like, I, I feel like we kind of ran into it when he first started, like, drafting the story was, like, oh, how, uh, like, how real, like, this is, is going to be? Is it, sure. like, yeah. is it all, like, uh, you know, like, how wrestling is all, like, kayfabe or whatever? Or is it going to have, like, behind the scenes stuff where like you know you talk about like is it going to be like a real competition but it's like the has the grandeur of pro wrestling or whatever or is it you know going to be like actual like real wrestling mm. um and like how we all know that it's like uh you know predetermined and all that stuff um so yeah so that that was kind of like i think the i think that's maybe like the first like bump that you hit with it and like and it's a pretty big bump because it's like it'll determine yeah. like where the story is going to go and like what you're trying to tell. Yeah. Yeah. I, I hope my goal was that we would strike a, a good balance between those two things because we, we spent, you know, the, the main characters are a wrestling family who run this, this promotion. And so we get into some of the real, well, quote unquote reality. I don't know. I don't run a promotion. It's as real as it is in my head. Uh, pro, uh, realities of, of, the backstage of running a promotion like that, but we're still in a comic book, right? So we have a little bit of suspension of disbelief we can play with. So we can really kind of push that line to where things are. Is this just professional wrestling or is this actually uh, real uh, violence that's happening? And we, setting our main character as sort of like a, um, a deathmatch wrestler allowed for us to walk that line really nicely because even though those matches are predetermined and they're still professional wrestling matches, you can't fake getting smashed with a light tube or yeah. falling onto a bunch of thumbtacks or something like that, you know? So there is violence inherent in it. And so it's just kind of turning the dial a bit on that stuff to make it all kind of gel together. Yeah. And you could tell um, from the first issue that you guys are definitely fans um, of the wrestling. Uh, Cause what I really liked is it remind me, a lot of the old school wrestling. I mean, again, grew up in that '90s era. For me, that was sure. that was our seven o'clock night was watching WWF. Uh, but it also, I liked it to me, and I could just be over overreaching that, like a lucha libre, definitely as well, kind of blended. And I think a lot of people don't realize that wrestling is worldwide. Um, yeah, almost oh, yeah. every country has a has a style of wrestling. It might not be what we know. Um, did you guys try to incorporate kind of multiple styles of wrestling or did you have a vision in mind of like a certain time period maybe of wrestling that you want to capture in this story? Um, Story-wise, I had always kind of put it in more or less modern times because I because the independent wrestling scene now in America is uh, is a nice mix of a lot of those things. Yeah. Like you've got your lucha guys, you've got your uh, uh, Japanese wrestlers, your Joshi wrestlers, all that kind of stuff. It all kind of mixes together really well. And I think as far as characters go, designs, it just is leaves a, a lot of opportunity for a really nice array of different looks and styles and stuff like that. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, that's sort of like was most I've taken inspiration from is like the. Uh, the indie scene and pro wrestling um, and just seeing how, you know, by going to a lot of shows and seeing like different, like how they're all, how they all prepared and how they look and how the wrestlers look. So it's like a big, uh, you know, just like a big range of like how you can uh, design these characters. You know, you can have like the people that like have like really basic gear and, you know, you can tell it like maybe they've been doing this for a while. They're not going to like move to like, the upper echelons of the, like, but then you can have, sometimes you have like big stars that show up on these indie shows and they look like they're like these larger than life TV, you know, character, like, you know, action heroes, you know, and they're like wrestling somebody that's like, you know, like 
five foot eight and uh, very skinny, but they, they still put on a great match, you know, yeah. and it's like, all depends on like the story that they're telling in the ring. And, you know, it doesn't matter like what you look like. You can be a great pro wrestler. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, um, <clears throat> the thing that I, I wanted to do is uh, in a lot of wrestling comics, like I said, it's, a, it's a lot of WWE, it's a lot of big names, but they also tend to take wrestling and use that and dial that up to its biggest, most operatic level yeah. And the thing that appealed to me was as I had gotten, I had fallen out of wrestling for years, but then I got back into it maybe about 10 years ago and started getting into more of the independent stuff and seeing more of the ground level of it that isn't, you know, million dollar production value. It's, it's a bunch of people doing what they love in a VFW somewhere. That was a lot of what I wanted to bring to it to kind of, make it a little bit more relatable. Yeah. Um, you know, cause as I started getting into that, I, I started seeing the parallels to, to working in comics where it's like every, every wrestling show is basically a small convention where, you know, these guys are going town to town, they do their matches and then they literally set up tables where they have merch and stuff that you can buy to help, you know, support them and stuff like that. And, uh, so I saw a lot of parallels there and I kind of wanted to tap into that a little bit instead of going, swinging for the fence and having it be you know um as as yeah, big money level, yeah uh spectacle and stuff like yeah. that and like, also it gives us room to to go there if we want yeah, to exactly future, yeah you know? if we want to eventually you know do the freaking uh wrestlemania level show or yeah the, uh, absolutely uh, <laughs> definitely yeah, so who knows yeah you guys uh like i said this first issue definitely uh, has a lot of setup for stories to go which uh, again is why we're here so hard style juice number one that's just one of the best titles ever that <laughs> title just like it it's sticks in your title. mind it, yeah it sticks in your mind so like prominently you can't help but not want to say it uh where does where does the title even come from i mean like how do you did that just like you said three words how does how does it sound yep. uh well so <clears throat> the title was one of the hardest things i think when yeah. we were first coming up with this because we were kind of going through some different, you know, wrestling terminology or some phrases and stuff, or it just, nothing was really, nothing was really clicking. And yeah. then I, I read an interview with, with a wrestler and he, in that interview, he just said heart style juice, which is wrestling terminology for when you get cut open by accident. You know, it's usually, usually they say like, uh, getting busted open the hard way or something like yeah. that, but mm -hmm. the specific way he said it was hard style juice. And that just jumped out at me. And I was like, oh yeah, that's one of those titles that like kind of doesn't sound like it means anything, but also yeah. just sounds cool to say. Like there was a lot built into it. I thought it was a, it was a pretty cool title. Yeah. Cause originally like we were trying to find something like that. Cause we wanted to, I think we wanted to be like three words or something mm. and like we were just trying like mixing words and stuff like different yeah like clay said and when he brought that i was like that's the one <laughs> yeah no that definitely that was a winner um the other thing that's really great about this and i don't know how how back and forth you guys had to go was the color palette with the art um and to me it gave like a neon double dragon uh kind of old school vibe to it um that I appreciate the most because the colors are so vibrant. Um, seeing all these different wrestlers, I don't know if you guys had to kind of talk a lot about it because that seems like something. I mean, at least from the pages, it seems something that flowed pretty naturally. That was all, uh, yeah, that was, was all say. like the colorist, uh, Heather, Heather yeah. Moore. She's an incredible colorist, uh, does amazing work. Um, yeah, like I, I had done like color, um, uh, for all the characters. I'd, pick like color palettes and stuff like that uh but then uh she was like hey is it cool if i can like change stuff some stuff around and like and i was like yeah do whatever you want and like when she came back with it i was like hell yeah this is awesome <laughs> yeah i couldn't remember it, rick if you had talked with her at all but my memory was that you hadn't and then she just kind of yeah it was just this like, stuff on us and we were like yeah all right this will work <laughs> yeah i was yeah. like i trust you you do whatever yeah, you want she's, and, she's fantastic yeah. yeah yeah she's amazing yeah, it definitely worked out. Um, like I said, very beautiful aesthetically looking at it. Um, same thing with the story. 
for everyone listening, what if you had to kind of give a little brief description of what the story's about, uh, what would that be? So the the shortest description, which uh, Rick came up with, was just that it's a pro wrestling murder mystery. Um, yeah. But to expand on that a little bit, it's about um, a wrestling family uh, where the the up and coming star of this wrestling family gets uh, dies in the ring very suddenly. And then the younger daughter of the family seems to think that it might be possible that he was murdered. And so she ends up having to take his place as sort of the star of the, of the show, but also is working out her own anger and frustration over the death of her brother in the ring and outside the ring by uh, using the, all the violence she's learned in wrestling to try and f- track down people who might know what happened to her brother or, or, you know, find out whether or not he was murdered, honestly. Yeah, no, I definitely would say that that accurately kind of sums it up. Uh, the nice thing, too, is uh, I feel like a lot of people now, we've gotten to see so many of the 30 for 30 or behind the scenes for wrestling, um, arguing with my family, which loosely based, I know, on uh, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. some of the background. Mm-hmm. Uh, that one, you guys, did, like I said, that felt very real, having seen all those and then kind of like the behind the scenes where uh, the one son, he's ready to go on to the big leagues. He's tired of the small promotions. He's, you know, he's he's ready to take his, what he sees as his, kind of his rightful place um, up top. Um, and this, the family dynamics. Um, I don't know if that was easy for you guys in terms of writing that and drawing it and kind of sketching it out. Um, or if it kind of took a couple kind of rough drafts of that. I uh I look to uh, Ricardo to help me a lot with that because it's you know the the family the Castro family is a Puerto Rican wrestling family and I don't know if you can tell by I'm not Puerto Rican, um and so uh, I can't tell by looking at me either, <laughs> <laughs> but I am Puerto Rican, yeah. born and raised. <laughs> and so, <clears throat> you know, I was trying to strike a balance there that it felt it felt real, but it didn't feel like I was leaning too heavily into that, and um you know I think I think the art goes a long way to really kind of. Uh, push that and and make them all seem like a unit you know the the apartment that they live in feels very lived in and all that kind of stuff yeah i like mostly like help clay like to and like help them with like the dialogue how maybe they would say things you know and stuff like that maybe some slang that they would use or like how they would like maybe affectionately talk to each other or refer to each other stuff like that and uh and i think it helps i think like it, it feels like pretty authentic like how they all talk to each other and treat each other. Yeah. I would say, uh, as you guys described before that you were kind of trying to give a real, like a real world example where this wasn't like a superhero kind of powered wrestling. Um, that definitely came through. Um, thanks. I know me, me and Ricardo were talking before the show. Uh, those last few panels of the first issue, uh, took me completely by surprise. Um, I, I, we were talking before I thought I for sure had had this whole story figured out. Um, and then that was just a complete 180. Um, now Excellent. the way, very happy yeah, to hear that. Yeah, yeah, you guys knocked it out of the park with that. Um, obviously, you got a couple issues with this planned. Um, was this a story that, as of right now, you kind of have an idea of how you want it to to end, or is this something like you had an idea, but now as you start the writing it and seeing how vast and how much you have to explore? Mm-hmm. You are looking at extending the story. I think ever since we started talking about it, it it was something that we'd like to do a lot of if given the opportunity. Yeah. Because like you said, there's just there's so much stuff to cover as far as the world of wrestling goes. And I I I had always pictured it as, you know, it's it's so strange to talk about this as something novel because this is how everything used to work. Um, before streaming was invented and stuff but like i had always thought of it as okay we have this central thing that is the engine of our story but it takes our character all over the place and does there are some issues that don't necessarily deal with this core you know murder mystery thing um and some issues that do it i I was thinking a lot about the x-files about how you know uh, Fox Mulder was driven by trying to figure out who killed his, or not who killed, but who, uh, what happened to his sister. Yeah. Yeah. And some episodes are about that, but some aren't, but that's always like in the, in the back of his mind. That's always the driver for his character. 
And so I, I, I really love the idea of, well, a big part of wrestling, a big part of independent wrestling is traveling the country, making these different towns and meeting different people and what kind of stuff you could get into there that different stories going to Japan was something we talked about uh, uh, wanting to do. So I think, yeah, I, if, you know, who knows what the future holds, but I, we would love to continue to do this if, if possible. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully enough people buy and we can do more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everyone listening, do your part. Um, can yeah. you buy multiple copies of a digital? Comic? <laughs> yeah, of course you can. I've done it on accident many times. Oh, okay. Good to oh, know. Good idea. That was a thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah open up solid. everybody, everybody out there, open up 15 different Amazon accounts. Yeah. Just keep buying that. Was that? that Alexa, please buy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah well, we're, you're going to be good. Um, you guys actually introduced a pretty fair amount of characters in this first issue. Um, mm. Do you each have, you might even have the same character, one that you kind of fell in love with more um, obviously there's some characters we are only gonna we only got to saw just the tip of the iceberg before we get to the meat of the story, but I don't know if you have one currently that just like this is your favorite character. Do you Rick? Um for me it was uh Ray. Uh so much because I like I, when I designed him, I was like, damn it. I don't I need more. We need I was, I remember like when I told Clay, I was like, we need to change the story. So we got to like <laughs> we gotta we gotta take this a different direction. Yeah. Like so yeah, uh so I like him a lot. Um and I also I like Candy a lot as well. Yeah, I think I think Candy's probably my favorite character. Um she's a she's a character who she's one of those characters who's a side character, but I I have so much that I want to do with her. That it's it's really difficult to keep her on the sidelines, but you know, as you're telling the story, obviously certain people need to get uh, the spotlight over others, and so she's definitely someone who, if we get to do future issues, I want to uh, expand on her story a bit. Because um, yeah, I, I, she's got a she's got a pretty cool backstory that we get into a little bit in in the first five issues here, but uh, yeah, hopefully yeah, enough to make the it tip of the iceberg. Yeah. 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 Um. Now the, the nice thing about wrestling is obviously you have your kind of your heroes and your heels. Um, did you find yourself kind of preferring to writing and drawing for one side more than the other? I always love a good villain. I find their stories more entertaining. Um, their their designs are just always cooler. They have the best weapons. Um, and I feel like in <laughs> wrestling too. Um, I mean, when NWO went bad, that was like the best thing ever. I loved that. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, everybody loves a heel. Um, yeah, it's a, it's been funny. Like uh, when I first, uh, I want to I guess spoil too much, but uh, when I first designed like who's so far kind of like the the main like villain so far, uh, I I was kind of like, yeah, he looks cool or whatever. But as I got to work on him more, I was like. Like I really like him now, and like I like the decisions that like we made for his design to be to look like how he looks and stuff like that. Um, even though it's like a pretty simple design, but uh, yeah, I think it, it works really well for like who he is, and I I really enjoy drawing him now. Yeah, and that's actually that's one character where I had I had pictured something different in my head. And then Rick was like, well, what if we did this, which was completely visually different? And I was like, oh, yeah, no, that's great. That's 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 fantastic. Um, but yeah, he 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 she's in the first issue, but he pops up more as as the story goes, but we won't we won't get too far into that. Um I really liked you know, it's I I found myself I don't know if it's just because she's the main character of the book, really, but I, I found myself getting really enjoying writing for um for chris uh the the main character there because she you know you have to kind of get into her head a little bit yeah um and i think what she's going through you can really kind of take your own you know level of loss or whatever and kind of just filter it through a character and so it's it's uh and it's a kind of character i've never really written before as well you know i've i've written um uh, mostly older men. That sounds weird to say. 
<laughs> but you know, she's she's like a she's a 17 year old girl going yeah. through a lot of you know uh, intense things, and so it, it was a it was a different kind of character to t to tackle. So it was fun to kind of get into that. And definitely. Uh, now it's amazing. You guys, like I said, even before in the first, you guys put out pretty decent amount of characters for a first issue. Um, and was it hard writing part of this and seeing a character and being like, man, I know we have to finish these first couple of issues, but I really want to do a side project of this person's origin and how they got into wrestling or maybe they took a dark path and this is like their choice of redemption. I don't know yeah. if that happened to you guys by writing um hard style juice there uh definitely you know because i think that's part of the fun with these characters is as you start there's there was um in either issue two or three i had written a scene where uh king castro who's the the patriarch of the family um talks to his daughter by telling telling her about the first time that he had won a, a major championship and how he was this ended up being this really bad champion because he was uh, partying too much and you know that this this fun really interesting kind of backstory for this guy and i was uh, i i think i had written it in and then our editor jasmine was like i don't i don't really know if we have room for this and it, that's the the thing that stinks is you have to really pick and choose what you have the space for what's going to help the story out the most and that was unfortunately one thing that was we had to cut cut out that i would you know i'd love to tackle it at some point but yeah, we had to like cut a lot from the first issue. I remember like, the first issue went through a lot of changes. Like yeah. it was honestly, it was one of those things where I think we did, you know, There's so our, many passes. <laughs> yeah, our our editor is a saint for putting up with this, but um, we, I had done like four, four like breakdowns of different versions, like trying to get it, trying to get it, trying to get it, and then when I sat down to write, actually write it, I'm on page one, and I was like none of this stuff is going to work. And I just had to change the whole thing again. Cause some, you know, you don't, you don't always know until you sit down and start write, writing it out page by page and really crafting what it's going to look like, how much of that stuff works and how much of it doesn't like, for instance, um, I realized we had done all these, these drafts of, of this outline and whatnot. And then when I sat down to write the first issue, I realized that uh, Ray Castro, who's a huge character in the story, didn't really get much of an introduction and kind of like was pushed to the side. And I was like, well, that's really going to hurt us because he's a big catalyst for the whole story. And so I kind of had to, you know, recrack it again on the page and, and kind of uh, find, find the right way to do it. Definitely. Um, now, the one thing I've always been curious uh, for, especially you guys that are kind of having your issues gone straight to digital right away um, is obviously you don't get the chance to do, like a lot of promotional work and I think variant covers because uh, this is one of those comic books that I see a lot of people being like, I would love to do a pro wrestler variant cover. Sure. Um, and is that something if you had the chance in Dark Horse says, you know, we're going to make the kind of the trade back uh, of this, um, you would want maybe want to have some friends that you have to kind of take a crack at maybe giving a special cover or. Yeah, I think that's the thing that hurts me the most yeah I, I really had like a murderer's row of artists yeah like, we got a lot of favors we want to pull in for this one <laughs> already that like they were just like yeah i'll do something for you if, and like that that really like hurt me yeah. <laughs> yeah. but uh um yeah so i don't know maybe we can like do a couple pinups or something for the for the printed edition who knows yeah. we'll see. uh that I, I would love that um but uh yeah, I don't know. If, like the people, maybe we can be the first to do varying covers for a uh, collected edition. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hey, why not? Yeah, loud. Yeah, that'd be awesome. One uh, one collector's edition with a like a lucha mask that comes with every collected edition. Yeah, sounds <laughs> sounds fantastic. Expensive um, to produce, but fantastic. Yes. Yeah. Hey, you know we got money. Yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, <laughs> So I guess at the end of this, you have your first, you have your five issues. Um, obviously, we're going to get a release soon. Um, where, where, what's the next steps then? Kind of as we get this kind of story out there and people kind of give their feedback. Do you have the next few issues kind of in the pipe, or is it kind of just on hold right now? But you have the rough drafts kind of waiting. 
yeah it's it's kind of on hold for the moment because this you know i think uh, rick is this the first time you've done digital first stuff i think it is right yeah 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 so uh, it's kind of new ground for both of us and i'm not really sure um what it's going to look like um or whether or not we get a green light to do more that's a conversation we've yet to have uh with comiXology um but we've got some ideas. We've been kicking around some ideas for where to go next. Uh, yeah. And yeah, I hope we get to do it. Definitely. Um, so before we wrap everything up and get the information on where to get this, I am very curious now, if you guys were given permission from Vince McMahon himself in a golden envelope to take any one of his wrestlers to put in your story in mm. full, 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 full trademark, do Good you guys call. each have have a wrestler in mind well Vince mcmahon doesn't is not uh he's not the guy anymore he's out so hey he might be selling stuff real cheap at this point i don't know yeah yeah Yeah. you might be in luck have to deal with him be a be triple h i guess yes Um, yeah do you have one off the top of your head rick oh i would go uh i I wouldn't go uh wwe i'd go aw kenny omega like Mm, i would think about it like give me uh, put Kenny on here. <laughs> Can we do an issue with like, you're like hey, you want to write <laughs> write an issue or something where sure. you're you're a uh, you're a uh, like co-write an issue where you like get to wrestle like Chris or something. If you want to percent down for something like that, or or even like uh, or somebody else would be like maybe like a uh, like Amina Shirakawa or like an Asami, somebody like one of the big. Yoshi uh wrestlers uh going right now. Uh yeah, especially if we took like if, kid, that would be also awesome. to Japan. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, that'd be that'd be sick. <laughs> yeah. I um I I so I, I tend to go the other way with it just because you know I it's how my brain works, right? Where I would be like, okay, I don't know, maybe someone like Jake the Snake Roberts, who has a really rough backstory, who could be yeah. a sort of mentor figure, something like that um someone with a, a, a kind of grizzled um i mean hey it's a comic book it's not real life so i don't know Roddy Roddy piper someone who's yeah, not yeah, around anymore maybe yeah. you know no i definitely uh that in bad it, like, taste i don't know if that's in bad taste that's no i don't think i think at all um i definitely was reading as like oh man can you imagine if uh macho man or ultimate warrior were to this oh yeah just a brief kid I, i'd be okay with that those are my two go-tos all the time. Yeah. All right. Warrior was always my favorite. You know, he was what got me into, yeah. I know he's not technically a great wrestler, but as a young uh, comic book fan, he was the closest thing there was to a live action oh, comic yeah. book character, yeah. you know? Definitely. Um, so we have this dropping on Amazon's Comicology, mm-hmm. uh, I believe uh, April 16th. Um, you're listening to this is probably around that time if not on that day um that is currently the only place to to get this correct yes uh but what you can do if so hopefully so you don't have to dig through amazon to find it you can go to hardstylejuice.com and that'll link you directly to the landing page where you can uh, get the book on amazon okay and hardstylejuice.com is the best place then to go to for all updates and kind of any type of other like about about the story and everything yeah right now um until the book comes out it's it's uh it's a sign-up sheet for an email list which will get you all the updates every time a new episode an issue comes out like that it you'll get all the info and then once the book comes out that'll switch directly to going straight to the uh to the page where you can get the book awesome and if anyone is interested in getting in contact with you or just kind of seeing you know what you guys are up to and your past stuff where is the best place to follow you and stay up to date on your guys's uh, adventure uh Rick. for me it's just uh r lopez ortiz for everything so at r lopez ortiz for twitter instagram uh all the other dead social media pages that are <laughs> that are now we're littered with them is that your uh, tv and art name too uh i didn't i never had a deviant art oh really okay <laughs> yeah funnily enough yeah uh but yeah it's uh yeah all of those yeah 
And mine, uh, all all of my socials are uh, at C McCormick four one four. So C M C C O R M A C K four one four. Awesome. Well, like I said, this first issue has been fantastic. I know we can't wait to see what else you guys got working. Also, do all five of your issues drop all at once, or are we gonna get them dispersed? They'll I be coming out. Yeah, they'll be coming out monthly, and then uh, okay. there'll be a trade, a digital trade first. Uh, after that, and then hopefully. Uh, if everything goes to plan, there'll be a hard a hard copy. I almost said hard style copy, but a uh, hard copy. <laughs> hey, hard hard style style copy. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> the collector's edition, hard style copy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> awesome. Well, we can't wait to, again, can't wait to see this story unfold. Uh, I can't wait to it's 16th to get it. Uh, hopefully we have you guys back on if you get a second run at this and we can go over the next story. Yeah, I'd love to. That'd be awesome. Thanks, uh, thanks so much for having us. No problem. Everyone listening, you can find this on Amazon Comixology, uh, the 16th, uh, and you can listen to this on any of your podcast streaming platforms and on YouTube. Everyone, have a good night. Good night.